Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and we're going to take a look at another Generation 1 Transformer. We're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different today. We're going to be taking a look at what is known as a Firecon. So let's give a warm welcome, literally and figuratively, to this Decepticon Warrior Flame Feather. Now, Flame Feather here has the distinction of being the last Decepticon character to be given the function of Warrior. For the remaining years following, there would be no Decepticons released in America that would be labeled with the just plain Warrior. They would have some other adjective before it. So, that may deserve some praise. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, Flame Feather here, he was released in 1988. He would be that part of that year's replacement of the low-cost Transformer toys, and he would be discontinued in 1989, and as I specifically stated, he did not have a direct replacement. Now, as a Firecon, he shares something in common with the Autobot Sparkabots that were being released at that time in the fact that in their alternate mode, they had a friction-powered unit on their underside that would allow them to spit sparks out. As a Firecon, he will shoot sparks out of the mouth of his creature mode. And one thing that uh, you should all already have noticed is that he doesn't have a Decepticon symbol on his chest, where it should be most prominent. Well, that's part of the various cheapening of the toys. But to tell he's a Decepticon, it's on his right foot. Not the most obvious of places, because as you can see, they didn't even put one on the other foot. I'm guessing the tattoo parlor must have not had a two-for-one sale. Now, Flame Feather here has a bad reputation amongst the Decepticons in the fact that he is a Decepticon Military Academy washout. He has anger issues and was instead thrown out of the academy, and sent immediately to the front lines to be somebody that could hopefully cause some Autobot casualties or, in the vain hope, get himself killed. Luck, more than anything, has kept this guy alive. And you'll learn more about him here in just a little bit. As articulation goes on him and his fellow Firecons, I'm gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, folks. It sucks. My apologies if anybody doesn't like that kind of language, but it is terrible here. The arms, forget it. They don't move. The only way they move is they fold up over his chest to transform him. The only articulation you really get is you can move his legs a little bit, but then they start running into his unmovable arms. So you basically, you can move one back about so far. You can move one forward about so far. And make him wobble over and just fall over. It is kind of... What do you do besides stand there? That's it. That's all he does in this mode. He just stands there. Okay, now I've had a minute. We're back. Now let's transform Flame Feather, and it's pretty simple, folks. We won't sugarcoat that. But we won't say it nastily. To transform him, you will take his non-moving arms and shift them very gently over his chest. I say gently due to the fact this one's kind of stiff. I'm almost afraid I'm going to break it, so please do bear with me, because I do not want to break this toy. 
Well, in reality, I wouldn't mind, but it's not mine to break. Then you'll take the monster head here that was hiding on the back. You'll fold it up a little bit, to some degree if you want. And you take the tail, fold it down between his legs, take that as you may, snap it into place, and you kind of adjust the legs a little bit so that he can stand in this mode. And that's his alternate mode, folks. Some sort of bird-like monster. Now, his articulation gets a little bit better in this mode. I mean, you can adjust the head accordingly to get into a few different positions. And you can move these little arms. They'll rotate fairway around. How far they go kind of depends on where the position of the legs are. So you can probably get them all 360 degrees. Now, the legs... You have to be able to rotate up like this so that you can take advantage of his spark shooting mode. Because you've got to drag uh, these, uh, these wheels down here against the surface to get him to shoot sparks out of his mouth. Let's see if we can rev him up and get him going here. Well, we're scuffing up the table real good, but we don't seem to be making any progress. So, I guess he doesn't really work anymore. Okay, I'm going to need a minute. That felt good. Alright, I should mention at this point, besides the fact that that was the best $60 I've ever spent on a figure, that flame feather here does not have any loose parts, so getting a complete one isn't that difficult. But as you can imagine, finding him also isn't that difficult. Moving right along now, we got something special to show off. We got a card backer. Of course, this is just the ordinary average American one that we always see all the time here on this channel. But, thanks to the good searching of my brother, we have this one from Europe. This is a dual language one from Europe. So we're going to take a quick look at it. This was put out by Hasbro's arm in Europe, Milton Bradley. As you can see right down here on the side, MB International from Holland. And you can see here you got everything in a different language and a nice dual language tech spec and you can see that at least this one unlike some of the earlier ones I've shown not only has a nice grid here on it but it does have numbers at the side so it actually means something now I want to also point out to the fact that a few weeks ago on my Snarl video that my friend Tyra mentioned about that the tech spec, the foreign one that I showed here, similar to this one right here, was actually, uh, the grid was actually upside down when compared to the original. 
I don't know how she managed to notice that, but I would say, good eyes, my friend, good eyes. But as you'll soon see here, this one and the American one, more or less, they match. So they didn't copy that over onto this one. Get that out of here. And we'll show you the backside of the American one. You saw it had the same mural here. This was the mural from 1988, mainly highlighting the Power Masters and Pretenders. And basically, how to set him up to shoot sparks from his mouth, which he doesn't do anymore. Jerk. And then basically how to transform him. We got the barcode over here, and he was worth half a point. Right now, he's not even worth that. And we'll get around here to his tech spec. As you can see, it is rather large. For some reason, at about this time, Hasbro decided to move the tech spec to be vertical on these small guys, and they made them extra large. I have no idea why they felt they needed to do that. The original ones were in a decent size to be red. I mean, yeah, for a while, some of them were getting pretty small, or it was getting ridiculous, but making it as big as this is, is almost even more ridiculous. Anywho, it's all done up in purple to indicate he is a Decepticon. It even says Decepticon above the picture. That matches sort of the one on the front of the package. It lists his name as Flame Feather, and his function is Warrior. His motto is, the only good Autobot is a deactivated Autobot. The only Decepticon ever thrown out of the Decepticon Military Academy for being too violent. Trashes entire car lots when there's nothing better to do. Usually works alone because his fellow Decepticons refuse to work with him. Flamethrower inside his mouth can fry a football field. Maximum flight speed, 90 miles per hour. Greatest achievement, talking to someone for more than a minute before flying into a rage. Who writes this garbage? Moving right along, we will now take a look at his tech spec. By putting the decoder over it as best we can. If there's anybody from Hasbro watching this video, please don't do something like this again. Alright, let's see. It lists his strength as 6, his intelligence is 4, his speed is 5, his endurance is 7, his rank is 5, his courage is 8, his firepower is 7, and his skill is five. So he's got great endurance, courage, and firepower. Everything else is very, very, very dismal. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of Flame Feather? Well, in case you haven't been paying attention for the time of this video, it should be pretty obvious. This is is a stupid toy. This is a stupid figure. Now granted, the fire cons really weren't that great, because his buddies, they all transform the same, they all do the same function, and their articulation is about as limited. But the only good points that can go to his buddies Cindersaur and Sparkstalker is they have at least unique functions. So they have that going for them, making them somewhat more useful to the Decepticon army. The problem with this guy is that he's an uncontrollable fit of rage. And most militaries would not take somebody that has this bad of anger issues. They wouldn't want them, because they'd cause more trouble to them than to the enemy. 
this was about the time when Hasbro was starting to get rather stupid with a lot of their tech spec bios for the Transformers. And I'm not sure if I'm right or not, but probably about in the 1988-89 era was about the time they were starting to make the G.I. Joes look terrible. It is kind of, who comes up with this stuff? Now, granted, yes, in some desperate situations of war, you'll take anybody you can get. But, since the tech spec bio mentions the Decepticon Military Academy, I like to think of the Decepticons as being similar to the Empire from the original Star Wars movies. They would train and, if necessary, abuse and brainwash their troops into being the best that they can be. Somebody like this that's too stupid and pathetic to even be around would probably be joining the Autobots easier, as they would be similar to the Rebel Alliance and take anybody willing to fight for their side that at least has some usage. But then again, beggars can't always be choosers. This guy, however, there is no purpose to him. He's your plain generic warrior, and he can't even do that right. He's about as bad as the G.I. Joe character Lobotomax. And I can tell you what some of the reviewers have said about him. I mean, I'm at the same point. Where's Shockwave? Where's my zapper? I want to blast this guy. Ed, you freak, get back here! In case you haven't figured it out, bottom tier all the way, folks. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Decepticon Useless Warrior, the Firecon Flame Feather. If you like the video, please, thumbs up it here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't joined us already. And please do like this video and share your thoughts in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear your opinions on Flame Feather, even if you don't happen to agree with me. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.